Okay, hello. This is a very quick video to show you a how to use a Richards equation model that I've coded up in Python and put into the IPython notebook, which is a way of running Python, which I will demonstrate. The idea here is that you'll learn uh, very quickly how to run this model and um, tinker with the boundary conditions and the parameters and, and do your own simulations. Okay, and it's also an introduction to Python, albeit a very quick one. So what you'll need is two files that I will send you or give to you. One of them is called richardsequation.ipynb. Okay, and the second one is called vanganukton.py. And we're going to open up the Richards equation, which is the model, using the IPython notebook. To do that in, on the Mac, you just type IPython notebook, IPython space notebook space, and then the name. And there will be some equivalent command to that in Windows, I should imagine. So when you run that, what that does is it opens up a web browser. And in the web browser, you have actually got your Python code. So this is a very nice way of, of running Python. OK. And uh, the code is split up into a number of blocks. So here is one block, and here is another, and so on. And there's probably six or seven blocks here. OK, and you can run each block separately. OK, so what I'll do is I'll quickly run each block and you'll see what the model's doing. And then I'll give a very, very brief ex explanation of what's going on, just so that you can actually run it and play with it yourself. That's all. OK, so to run a block of code, I put the cursor inside that block and I press Shift Enter. And I just sort of make sure when it gives you a number there, that means it ran. And there's nothing under here, so there are no errors. So that's a good sign. Let's run the next next block. That ran as well. And now the next block. Uh, and that's run. And that one's actually produced me a, a figure, which I asked it to, to, to produce. OK, those are the hydraulic properties. Um, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's run the next block. And this one took a bit longer to run. It was actually running the model. Um, and it printed out after, you see underneath the block of code, it says model run successfully, which is just uh, something that gets printed out to tell you that there were no errors. And then let me run this block. OK, that ran fine. And then this block. And that's produced another figure for me. And finally, this block. And of course, that one failed for some reason. And it failed because it doesn't like the way I'm trying to produce a legend for some reason. But then again, it actually worked. It, it gave me a warning. I did something wrong, but um, it's probably upper left with a capital L. Let's just try that. Uh, OK, I don't know why it failed. It doesn't matter. It, it, the, the figure got produced. But the legend didn't get put in the upper left as I last it, asked it to. That doesn't really matter. OK, now let's just see what we do, just produced. In this first set of figures here, I'm plotting the hydraulic properties and of the soil. OK, so these are the Van Gernutten properties. And it's a theta-psi relationship. The x-axis here are always psi, which is the pressure head. So I have theta-psi, I have c-psi. And I have k psi. Those are the three fundamental relationships that define the properties of the soil, allowing us to simulate the movement of water through the soil. Okay, and in this case, I'm using um, I have this function which is uh, coded up, which implements the Van Gunnetten hydraulic properties. And in there, there are various um, types of material. So if I just do P equals VG dot, and then I press tab, it gives me a list of various materials that I've coded up. So let me try using the Guelph loam drying instead. All right, like that. And then if I run, and now because I've changed that, I need to run that block again. Um, okay, so let me just explain this block then. This block here is importing a bunch of libraries. The first thing you need to do whenever you're going to produce plots in an IPython notebook is you need that line there. Then you need to import 
libraries for plotting using this line here and then you need to import libraries for handling matrices which is this line here okay you just always basically need those three lines you'll always need them so just copy and paste them this line imports my Van Gunnuchten library that I created myself um, it's very simple and you actually got it in that .py file I showed you um, anyway don't worry too much about that um, and then finally these two lines here are importing a library that is used to actually integrate the differential equations and again don't worry too much about that we will cover that but not don't worry about it now and this line as I just showed you is, is selecting which parameters which kind, kind of soil I want to use from the default Banganutten soils and I'm using here now a Guelph loam drying soil Okay, now my second block is the actual model. So it's a function. In Python, you put functions within this def statement. Okay, and it's a function that basically solves the right hand side of Richard's equation. Okay, don't worry too much about that um, if you haven't seen that yet, um, but you will in time need to get familiar with this. Okay, that's that block. And at the end, it returns the left hand side of Richard's equation, d side by dt. Okay, the next block, the third block here, is just going to plot the material properties for me um, so that I can see what they look like. So let's actually do that because I just changed it from a hygiene sandstone to a Guelph loam drying. So if I run this block again, look at that figure. You see, it's quite profoundly changed. So this is a different type of material. It has a much smoother theta psi relationship, a much more gradual C psi relationship, and there's the K psi relationship too. Okay, so we're going to get some different results now to what we saw before. Okay, and now the fourth block here is running is actually going to run the model. So I have a function up up there that solves the right hand side of Rich's equation. This is going to define the boundary conditions define the grid in space, define the grid in time, define the initial conditions, and when I've done that, I can just solve the model, and it will output the pressure head for all points in space and all points in time. So you should understand that this is a one-dimensional Richards equation model, so we're looking at the depth, a, a profile, a soil column, basically. Um, so it goes over, over some depth range, in this case, I have it going over 5 meters depth with a space step of 0 0.1 meters. I'm solving it over a period of 10 days with 101 time steps. So that's a time step every 0 0.1 of a day. Um, I've put an infiltration flux of 0 .1, 0 0.01 meters a day. And I have a pressure head of 0 at the lower boundary. Okay, and you can modify those if you like. I also have um, hydrostatic initial conditions, which I achieve by setting the pressure head in the profile equal to minus Z. Okay, right, so let's run it again. Now we have the Guelph loan parameters, let's run it again. And that ran very quickly. And look at this next block. This next block, post-process model output to get useful information. So at the moment, I've run the model and that gives me pressure head at all points in space and all points in time. I can use this block here to get water content from the pressure head, uh, to get soil storage and change in storage, to get the infiltration flux, and to get the discharge flux. So those are things that are consequences of the pressure head and I could just calculate them using this code here. And now we're just going to plot some of the outputs. So in the in this block of code, we plot vertical profiles. And these are things if I just run it again and show you. Oh dear, it's gone horribly wrong for some reason. So rather than try and explain why it's gone wrong, I'm going to Go back to my hygiene sandstone again. So press tab, da da, and run that again, and run that again. Got my old properties back. 
run the model again, post process the, the model again, and now try plotting again, and it should work this time. There we are. Yeah. Okay, so please ignore that error. I'll, I will address that at some point. Let's just look at what I've just plotted. So I've plotted here elevation and pressure head and elevation and water content. And each line here is a different point in time. So this blue line is the initial condition, hydrostatic conditions. And then I infiltrate water and you can see what happens when I infiltrate is that the water con uh, look at the water content. The water content starts to increase. And it increases to some constant value and then it and it sort of propagates a wave back down through the soil uh, until we reach this point here. Um, so in other words, this was our if this was our initial water content profile here, then on the right we have the final water content profile. Okay, of the same plot, okay? Finally, this is plotting some time series, so let's run this one. And what this is plotting is in green, in, first of all, in green we have the infiltration flux, which is constant. It's 0.01 meters per day. And then in red we have the discharge flux. And you can see initially there's no discharge from the soil, and then it starts to increase until it reaches the same value as the infiltration flux, and then it stops increasing. And then the blue line is the change in storage. And you see initially we have uh, a constant change in storage. So we have water content is increasing at a constant rate. This is the rate of change of storage, I should say. And then it's as the as we start to increase the outflow, we start to reduce the rate of change of storage until it reaches zero. So at the end here, we're at steady. We're in steady state conditions, steady state infiltration conditions. So that was a whistle-stop tour of this model, and I hope that you'll be able to run it yourself and experiment. And in particular, what I suggest you experiment with is the boundary conditions here, and um, maybe the initial conditions as well, and also maybe different properties, although my experiment with the Guelph loam didn't go well for some reason. And it's likely because I probably put too much infiltration in. So let me, okay, let me do, try again with the Guelph loam one more time. I'm going to risk wasting this video to get this to work. Guelph loam drying. Whoops, Guelph loam drying. Run that block. Uh, plot the properties again just to make sure they look rational, and they do. Um, let me reduce my infiltration flux to by an order of magnitude. I may have been trying to put too much water in. So run that. It seems to run. Post process the model outputs. Seems to have worked. Um, produce the first set of plots. And it worked. Excellent. And produce the second set of plots. And that works. It's not very interesting, though. But let's just look at this one. You can see that with the Guelph loam, I have a very low infiltration rate. And over the 10 days that I've infiltrated, I haven't really, I've only just started to wet up the top of the profile. OK. I'm going to show you one other example before I leave this video, which is supposed to be a whistle stop tour that lets you get into this thing quickly. So put it back to Hygiene Sandstone again. Run that. Whoops. Run that block of code. Properties again. Don't have to do that, but I will. Um, let's put this one back to 0.01. And now let's change this. If I specify psi bot is equal to empty, that means, then what that means is that the code is going to use a free drainage boundary at the lower boundary condition. So I can either specify the pressure head at the bottom by putting a number into side bot, or I can specify the flux at the bottom by putting a number into Q bot, or if I make them both empty, then it knows that it has to use a free drainage boundary condition. So let's just see what that looks like. Run the model, post process the outputs, produce the first set of plots, hopefully, and there they are. And it's a bit 
fiddly, but what you should see is a completely constant, in the end it should reach a completely constant pressure and water content, and it looks like it probably has done that. Okay, that's a free drainage lower boundary condition. Um, and this is what the fluxes look like. So we have discharge that's actually quite large at the beginning and coming down. And essentially, if you these these give us the water balance, by the way, these equate these lines here, they should all sum to zero. Or rather the blue plus the red should equal the green. Okay. Right, that's it. So Please have a go at playing with this code. Don't necessarily worry too much about understanding all of it. And uh, over time, we will start to understand what's going on in the actual script. Okay, enjoy.